How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. All right, so today's video is going to be about the world's weirdest border. Um, and it is Germany. It says, hidden away in the rolling Eiffel Hills, it's one of the world's weirdest international borders, a long string-shaped piece of Belgium that runs through western Germany. Why is it there, and why does it have to do with an abandoned railway. This guy checked it out in this channel, the Tim Traveler, and uh, really, I enjoy his name. I really like it. Very creative. Let's check it out, guys. Hello, it's April Hello. 2019, and I'm in Belgium, and now I'm in Germany. And if we just get to the other side of the road, now I'm back in Belgium again. But those buildings through the trees, they're in Germany. So what on earth is going on here? And more importantly, what has it got to do with this abandoned railway line? Welcome to the borderline insanity mm. of the Fenbar. This is the town of Monschau in western oh, Germany. Wow. It's a gorgeous little place sitting in a valley overlooked by a 13th century castle with a perfectly preserved medieval center full of historic half -tip So is that what they call a village then? I guess when I think about village, this is kind of what I think about. Because um, I think like a village is kind of like a town, which is what like we would call it. I live in a town, but the ta our towns are like the houses aren't thrown in there like that. Um, that to me looks like a little community. I enjoy that. I like that a lot. I really like these uh, windows here. That's really cool. The roof. Wow. Castle back there. This is really, really cool. 13th century castle, with a perfectly preserved medieval center full of historic half-timbered houses and quaint little shops selling traditional arts and crafts. And of course, the reason we're here is absolutely nothing to do with any of that. Okay. Here's Monschau on a map. What I've come to see is one of the world's weirdest international borders. No, not that one. This one. Why is there a spaghetti-shaped bit of Belgium inside Germany. Well, there's no way I'm not going to go and investigate that. So we're going to climb out of the town a little bit and then follow this bubbling brook upwards through some woodland until the GPS on my phone tells me that the spaghetti is just over there. Looks like it's on top of this. I can't wait. This is the kind of stuff that I want to do in film because this, this stuff just like really interests me. The world interests me just so much. So much. Embankment. I wonder what we'll find up here. Huh. I hate to say it, but this looks an awful Ooh. lot like a disused railway. That looks like a really smooth bike trail. What I would love to ride my bike on that. What we've <coughs> stumbled across here is the former route of the Fen Railway, or in German, the Fenbahn, an old railway line that used to run from Aachen in Germany to Toivierge in Luxembourg. It was built by the Germans in the 1880s to carry passengers, iron ore and coal, and it did this in a fairly serene and uneventful way for 30 years, until someone shot an Austrian and everyone decided that the best thing to do next would be to have a war. This oh. is what Germany looked like at the start, and I don't want to spoil the ending if you haven't seen the film, but this is what it looked like afterwards. The Treaty of Versailles gave away huge tracts of land, including this bit, which went to Belgium. And yes, some of you are there already. That just happened to be the same little bit of Germany that had the Fenbahn in it. So the Fenbahn was now in Belgium, but just to complicate things, and Röttgen was still in Germany. Luckily, back then, just like nowadays, 
Everyone was pretty chilled out about international borders, and it didn't really matter. Oh, no, wait. Germany argued, This railway is ours. We have built it. It is in Germany. It is very logical. And Belgium turned round and said, What are you on about, mate? It starts in Belgium. It ends in Belgium. It's got Belgian trains on it. It's flipping Belgian. The dispute wasn't resolved until 1922, four years after the end of the war, when an international commission ruled that the trackbed, the railway, and its buildings all belonged to Belgium. So I think I've got this right. I'm standing in Belgium. That's Germany. That's Germany. Uh, and that bridge that links Germany to Germany is Belgium. This had the unintended but unavoidable effect of creating five exclaves of Germany, separated from the rest of the country by the railway line. Munsterbildchen, Röntgen Forest, Rückschlag, which is literally just someone's house, Mützenich, and Rietzhof. Ah. The two countries enforced customs controls at the beginning and end of the section, and passengers and goods bound for Belgian destinations were placed in special vehicles that could be temporarily locked to keep them on the train until they were safely back in Belgium again. And apart from a period in World War II when Germany briefly regained control of the whole line, that's how things stayed until the 1970s, when Belgium decided to basically stop serving the German stations, which simplified things. But with passengers and freight diverting to other routes, the line began to be neglected. And by the time EU freedom of movement arrived in the 1990s and effectively removed the border problem, there was hardly any traffic left anyway. The Fenbar okay. was eventually shut down at the end of 2001. Okay. Most of the evidence of the former railway has gone now, and the route has been turned into a long distance path for cyclists and hikers. But here at Kalter Herberg, where the line rejoins the rest of Belgium at the southern end, you'll find an old station, and the start of seven kilometres of remaining track. That's they cool. They don't run trains from here anymore, but entertainingly, you can instead pedal your way down the line on a rail bike. Oh. It looks like a lot of fun, and I was all set to jump on one of them before being politely advised that they're quite heavy, they're quite a lot of effort, and really they're designed for groups and families. If, like me, you're neither a group nor a family, you can... Okay, that is super, super creative. Um, I wonder, like, so what would something like this cost? All right, so yeah, this is like just a cute little thing. You could come, go down a track, um, bike the trail, and just be surrounded by nature. Like, that... Sounds perfect for me. And families. If, like so me, cool. you're neither a group nor a family, you can at least console yourself with a tremendous selection of waffles from the buffet car. Or pop back over to the German side of the road and get some schnitzel from Biggie's. Which one's better? After that, my stomach was almost as heavy as a rail bike, so I hopped on a bus back up the line. And if you look carefully out of the window here, you can just about not quite see the single exclaved house at Rückschlag, which remains separated from the rest of Germany because, even though the railway's been gone for nearly 20 years now, Belgium seems quite happy to keep the land. The bus dropped me back at the same place where I started the video, the old station at Röntgen, ah. where a particularly squiggly section of the border means that you can jog across two whole countries in about 15 seconds. Wow. Brings a whole new meaning to the phrase cross-country running. But whether you're here for the running or the railway history, the biking or the rail biking, or you just really like collecting text messages from phone networks welcoming you to their country, there's no place on earth quite like the Fenbarn. That is awesome. I thought that video was very interesting, and I hope you guys did too. I will. See you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.